Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 4, Episode 1 of the PSR Podcast. Welcome back. It's finally time to do a podcast in 2024. Uh, I'm Tucker, and with with me are the usual hosts, uh, Iron. Hello. Etiquette. Hello, hello. And uh, this time around, we don't have Jordan. Jordan has stepped down, but we have brought in Headbob. Hello. So yeah, uh, new season. Uh, a lot of runs to cover today. Um, we don't have a focus topic to start. Uh, we figured that we just go through all the runs that we missed. Uh, we're, we're covering a lot. Basically, everything that's happened since December <clears throat> 2023, because we haven't had a podcast in that long. So, um, yeah. Uh, and before we get into the runs, uh, we do want to mention that uh, there was a little bit of an incident that happened in PSR uh, involving cheating. Um, one runner in particular did uh, start claiming a bunch of good times, and um, they were previously covered on the podcast, but um, we are... We are aware of the whole situation and a lot of the well pretty, pretty much none of the world record history is like too damaged and uh we can continue on from there um is there anything else that you want to say about about that yeah i think if we can limit how much attention he's actually getting nowadays because yeah I mean, uh, that's that's probably for the best um obviously we don't stand with like anything he did um and we're, we're happy to so he's not like a member of PSR anymore. Cause... This, this happened like all the way in like December, so like it's it's already been like covered a lot. Like if you're in PSR, you definitely know who it is. Um, if you don't, then you probably can find out pretty easily. Figure yeah. it out, but like we're not gonna we're not gonna like direct you like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's all we got. Uh, we can just go straight into the runs now. Yep. So no no guests this week. Um, we got a lot of runs to catch up on, so we'll get we'll get moving right now. So uh, okay. So we have Math Genius with um, third place in Pokemon Emerald Glitchless, uh, two thirty one fourteen. Um, this run was looking pretty solid. Uh, had, a, had a not like an outstanding early game, just like. Uh, a, bulk, a bulk of the time lost was like from like early game to Watson because like he was pretty much a minute behind world record since Watson and then like for the rest of the run stayed pretty close in terms of like not losing too much time to record that's how I'm like judging this run it's a it's a solid time and you know um, it's yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like nothing really impressive happened. What I highlighted here was um, the Deathless Tropius, which saves a decent bit of time and helps him get a lead on PB. But um, other than that, he gets like a Blizzard Miss on Champ. Um, pretty much cleans up on a lot of time loss that he had on PB on Champ there. So, yeah. Shoutouts to the splits. Yeah, the matching is uh, special. <laughs> Classic. Alright, we'll uh, switch over to... We don't have a timestamp here, but... Um... Ah, um... This is Poka Guy? I like Koga. Good Arbok. Koba? Or... What? Koga? Yeah, or Arbok. Koga or Arbok. I, I have it in the notes. Uh, 5938 for Arbok. That is the trainer. Nope, that's. Yeah. Oh, we've gone so, past Muck already, but I think the wheezing was the. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, th th this is, Poke guys, uh, one fifty nine thirty four in Fire Leaf Green Glitchless. Um, the first and only sub two. Uh, it's quite the incredible run um it's it there's wasn't many run, uh parts of the run that we could highlight for um time loss 
uh, one of them being the Miss Koga range right here. Um, he misses the Weezing range in Torrent and uh, doesn't doesn't die. So it's like I mean, yeah, it's just like he missed the range, so he loses like about twenty. Um, the other place that he had like a significant time loss is uh, the Arbok in um, I believe Sylph. So that's at fifteen nine thirty eight in the uh, rocket hideout. Yeah. yeah, yeah, rocket hideout. Yeah, uh, he gets pretty pretty trolled there, like yeah. pretty pretty insane. But but yeah, the time Our losses are like range. countable, for sure, which is like pretty crazy to say in like a fire the green run. It's a lot that can happen. Yeah, I I, I remember watching this run like live and um, just like. I don't know. The, the, the run was super far ahead in early game. Like, I believe Pokey got, like, hit his splits for a while. Because, like, looking at the at the lead that he had was, like, kind of jarring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, hit it for to control nerves, and, um... By that time, he got to, like, got past Koga. He was... He just kind of cruising. Um, he, he kind of got, like, a insane E4 as well. Which was maybe necessary to get the sub two, um, which is I don't know. It, it's pretty insane that it happened. <laughs> like sub two and fire red. It, this run put it yeah. into perspective for me, like how just how hard it is, and this run had like so much going for it. Yeah, one of the one of the most monumental barriers left in PSR was, was sub 2 and fire it and Pokey Guy had been wanting it for a while he, I think he said it was like the last one he was like actually trying to like strive for and so after he got it he was like pretty content with not doing too much more in PSR as he's like kind of retired slash on a hiatus right now mm -hmm. he had already been like kind of retired but um yeah this one was weighing on his mind like all the time <laughs> very, very substantial uh 159 as well 34 it's like it's not like just a sub two yeah yeah very impressive um this is patternies uh fire red leaf green and percent glitched uh world record on console 12142 um from from what, what i know it's just pretty standard run uh not the greatest early game a lot of its run um is just encounter luck as you can see here he's just looking for the abra um looks like it's gonna take a while but yeah uh, the, the this category has pretty much been boiled down to like just get um just get fast misty as usual um, and then you're fishing for like an Abra. You're, you also want a Spiro to trade for Chiding. <laughs> um, and Mr. Mime makes the a lot of the fights pretty simplistic. Um, so yeah, it's not much can not not much else can really affect the run in such a short category. But yeah, this definitely yeah, there... comes out to the Abra. There is some work being done on trying to manip the Abra, um, and not only manipping it, but also manipping it to be the level 13 with holding a Twisted Spoon, which is beneficial for Mr. Mime, and then also potentially chain manipping into another Abra for teleport, but that seems like a lot of work to figure out, and also to execute that would be very difficult, because this game for RNG manipulation doesn't work quite the same as Emerald. Uh, there's a lot more uh, frame perfect stuff you have to do, so. It actually seems not that bad though, because I think I think it's like one of the inputs is frame perfect, and then one of them is a four frame window. So like it's actually seems yeah. assuming, assuming yeah, it's it true. works on console, which I don't actually know if it does or not, but um, assuming it works on console is actually pretty substantial in terms of, you know, getting on good runs if people can actually do it and which is like really good for the category. As you can see here, Abra catching is pretty bad.
I think that's the 13, looks like. Yeah, 13 helps quite a bit. Alright, well, congrats to Katernese on that one. We're going to move on to another <laughs> any percent run, this time on Emulator by Ananan. Um, yeah, I guess I'll talk about this one. So this is a Ananan's any percent emulator world record. Um, it was the first run, I think, um, that had a new corruption, um, which basically just allowed you to... Well, I know the EV spread has changed, but I think aside from that, there was just like a different corruption method that was just quicker um, than what the old rut was doing. Uh, like by the time, when you go in the PC, like a method of actually corrupting is like quicker. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. To my knowledge, it's um, you don't need specific EV spreads on Mr. Mime, so you can kind of just fight trainers that are faster rather than trying to focus on specific EV, EVs because you needed attack and HP, I think. Um, uh, yeah. And now it's no, it doesn't matter. It's just get to the level 33 as quickly as possible. And then in addition, the corruption, instead of corrupting a, a mon that you're putting in your PC, you're actually um, creating, effectively creating a corrupted mon in the PC. So you don't you catch one last thing, I believe. Yeah, that's that's, that's pretty nice, actually. Being, being able to skip an extra catch is like really insane. So yeah, this, as a result, he saved a minute and a half on his previous PB. So yeah, pretty pretty good run. Um, not a lot of people running any percent these days, but I think from what I understand, this is like a pretty pretty solid run. Yeah. Obviously, this double battle can be a bit trolly, but yeah, it didn't seem like it was too too bad here. So, congrats to Anna and Ann. Uh, all right. I think we have at least one more Gen One to Three. Uh, this is also Anna and Ann. <laughs> Yeah, this one was uh, fairly recent, actually. Um, so it's a Sapphire Glitchless PB, uh, 157, 59. Um, so, yeah, this run started off pretty exceptionally well with um, Magic Crit on Roxanne. Uh, like 1608 is a pretty good time. Uh, and then pretty much held up until Norman. As you can see, he got crit by Vigoroth, and he's about to miss a mud shot on the next slacking which will lead to slack off so does lose like quite a big chunk of time here um so yeah I, this, this run was like borderline 156 pace up until this point but obviously with a lot of run left to go um wasn't able to well, that 156 pace, um, I guess we can fast forward to a Glacia around a 150-48 timestamp. Um, so yeah, uh, he, he gets first try, Kyogre, it's mild, um, but on Glacia, on the Celio, uh, he gets like body sign paralyzed. Um, maybe fast forward a little bit more to Celio. Yeah, yeah, this fight is just so bad when you get, like, the fact that the, the fight just becomes so much worse when you get paralyzed by Body Slam. Um, if you get paralyzed twice, it means that, um, uh, Celio, yeah, I think Celio has a chance to hail, or something has a chance to hail. So then the fight becomes even worse. Um, yeah, it, it basically just depends on you not getting paralyzed at all, or else you lose like a huge chunk of time. So you, like, even though he's only going to get paralyzed like once or so, still pretty bad. The, the time loss from this fight like almost uh, killed PB. It was like only like a second ahead after this fight, but um, just with the way that the rest of the run went. Um, Say five seconds and got a one fifty seven. Um, nice run. Also worth noting, I guess, if you know Sapphire at all, you'll see 
his Brawly split here uh, being 25-23 and be like, hey, that's not possible. Um, and that's because there was actually like kind of a route change that happened in the last like month or so um, where runners just came to the realization collectively that like there's really no reason why we, we can't be doing Brawly first. Before it was like, um, we, we maybe thought it was like a step counter issue or like um, it was just slower because there was no menu to do it in, but it actually saves time because it makes a, a, another menu better um, and then gives us a lot better reshot efficiency for Brawly, which is one of the harder fights in the game. So there's that route change that this run has implemented and then all Sapphire runs that have been happening lately have been implemented, so I figured that was worth mentioning. Awesome. But yeah, <clears throat> great run for Ananen. All right. Moving over to Gen 4 with Rubentis. Yeah, got, got quite a bit of uh, DS runs here. Um, we have a Pearl Any% Manipus record by Rubentis, a 100023, first to 100. Um, there's been a $500 bounty for the first sub one. Um, in DP any percent Metroplus. and this kind of motivated Rubentis to start playing again and basically full on commit to getting hidden power grass or water and um, commit to the no optional trainers route basically just full YOLO um, and on this run he did get that um, got a lot of time saved for not getting so many encounters on in an early game so he kind of had the sub one pace up to this point, but then the patchy double definitely killed that. Um, he missed the 50% beauty fly range, and then the Patrice <laughs> is going to kill Chansey here. Um, and uh, I think he's also going to get Spark Para. Maybe crit. Yeah, also crit. Yeah, so he has to heal the full here. When he really wouldn't have needed to without either the crit or the the paralyze so yeah that's, that's just a brutal fight to go on a really good run up to this point but um still managed to get a 10023 okay pretty good uh, moving on we have some platinum runs we have uh, Len was here in March um, with a second place run in Plat 90%, 238.06. This is, I believe, like only a few seconds behind record. Oh, sorry, I didn't know it. <laughs> I think it's two seconds behind record, and record is the 06. Um, but yeah, this, what's being showcased here is just the, um, a Teddy Cruel minute fail um that's kind of the thing that helped us run back like the most but um as you can see on his live split his category is called any percent low exp route which kind of gives away uh the the new route that was used to improve by any percent where um basically before we were fighting like a lot of optionals as Chimchar to get to Monferno before Rourke, but now we don't fight any optionals. Uh, we fight Rourke as Chimchar and we utilize Battle Minute, the save and quit Battle Minute, to beat Rourke. Um, I believe it's like a two frame uh, Minip in 60 FPS, that is. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so it's pretty heavily reliant on, you know, hitting Battle Minute, but. Um, it saves like probably about like two minutes. Um, you save like just three minutes or, or so um, just from not finding the optionals, and then like with the lower exp, you lose like about a minute um, during the Monferno section. But yeah, um, it's it's good in plat any percent because um, you teach rock smash anyway to Chimchar. This is not so good in like glitchless because. You know, teaching Rock Smash to Chimchar would mean you lose a move slot, and Chimchar has like a really strong need for four move slots that are actually useful. But yeah, um, hmm. 
So in so Platinum, is there? There's no hidden power or anything like that in Diamond and Pearl, right? Yeah, no hidden power. That would help a lot, I guess, which I'm sure. <laughs> that, would, that would be the much better way to go about it. Yeah, it, 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 if you look at the fight, I guess you could... Um, oh, sure. Yeah, that'll be interesting to look at. Work fight, yeah, it's... As with as with um, save and quit RNG here. Fights, yeah. As, as with most um, save and quit fights, uh, it's it's like super telegraphed, like what RNG you'll get. So like he's gonna get like Ember burns and crits and like rock smash drops. You can fast forward like just a little bit more into the fight. Um, but yeah, like it's. You kind of need to get all these burns because the rock throws are doing too much damage to you. Um, he's gonna take a few here to just like and you play blaze. Um, yeah, rock throw can miss. Like you can RNG manipulate that. Like there, there's just a lot of things that you can do to get a a good outcome using the nips. Um, so you, this is how you get that without like fighting any option this is just like you know what's gonna happen you're gonna get a win um so yeah pretty insane to see this strat like in full fruition in runs now um definitely a good improvement on the <laughs> previous route yeah, it's pretty you get like comical like <laughs> it's just crazy to look at <laughs> yeah so all of these, all of these turns are all like telegraphed, pretty much. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, that's wild. Yeah, um, I guess the last thing to mention about plat any percent is that, um, well, there hasn't been a PB showcasing this yet. Um, apparently, there's an even better new route um, that doesn't involve getting tentacruel at all. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually better, but basically the concept is that instead of getting a tentacruel, we just stick with um, catching a Golduck. Uh, we need to get a better Golduck, though, not the one that we use in, in this uh, seed. Um, but basically, like before, we couldn't find a seed that had like all the requirements meeting, like, Chimchar with Pokerus and, um, you know, good stats and, like, a Golduck with good stats at level 40 uh, in Eterna. Um, that, that just all wasn't possible, but now that um, we do a save and quit at Roar, that unlocks a lot of new seeds, so the whole idea behind this potential new route is that um, March is gonna save and quit to beat Rourke, and then from there extend until Golduck and use that Golduck like, as oh a my god for the rest of the run. How far is Golduck from Rourke? Um, it's, it's after Jupiter. After you beat Jupiter in um, Eterna, so like once you get the bike. Okay, it's like another 15 minutes or so. Um, oh no, Jupiter is actually much later, yeah. 56 yeah, minutes, it, yeah. So like around the 56 minute mark. That was Mars Jupiter. that I was seeing in the Golduck. splits. <laughs> Yeah. Um I, I, I think this run does get extended to Golduck. Like most good runners are pretty much relying on getting extended to Golduck anyway. But um it does make the 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 new route does make the run like a little less um intensive because you don't have to rely on a tentacruel midif that's like super difficult. Like tentacruel midif is Probably one of the hardest midips in PSR right now, um, just because of, like how you have to control lag frames and like you have to battle minip the catch with like a three frame window and like it also starts with um a, a one framer in thirty FPS to even hit the initial seed. So that like cutting that out is definitely nice, but um yeah, it, it, Golduck's um. What 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 March thinks is that Golduck is just gonna be faster as a solo main, if as long as uh he finds one with the best stats, um, which I think I think he has. I think he started doing runs like two days ago or something. So I'm kind of excited to see 
where he goes with that. Yeah, Gold Golduck, if you don't know already, is just like um a more consistent main for the the rest of the glitch portion of Plat. Um it has like Cloud Nine, which basically nullifies the, the effects of fog on fog route. So you're not like missing all the time. Um Golda comes at level 40 while Tentacruel is level 50 and has like a poison barb, which means that it's like a lot better, like and stronger, uh, deals with more things with the coverage a lot better. But um, Golduck is just like, it has just like consistent fights, like a very, very like safe, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I, it, it's just a matter of like whether like skipping the Tentacruel catch and just Meaning Goldig is faster or not, and March thinks that Goldig is faster, so we're gonna maybe see that in the future. Awesome. Yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of developments in Plat Hundred Percent. Yeah, these the, yeah these DS runs are insane <laughs> in terms of the work that's put into them. Yeah, Super Plat Hundred cool Percent is definitely like one of the best to showcase that. Yeah, we have another Platinum Percent run. Um, we have Alwo. He got a uh, the a third place run, a two thirty eight thirty seven. Um, this is using the same route that uh, March PB'd with. Um, although he didn't extend all the way to Golduck, so he had to rely on a backup save and quit minute to get it. And um, later on in the run. Uh, he caught Tentacruel, but it was like fourth ball, so that did lose a lot of time. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this run. It's like it's it's kind of no, it's just kind of a weird vibe because like we know that the, these runs can be like a lot faster, like two minutes faster, if uh, all the things align for a good run on the new route. Um, like just just like, like utilizing all the time save and getting um first try like midips for uh the the gold like or the ten of cruel like is gonna produce a two thirty six soon enough so yeah once again platinum percent is like something to look out for I, I I've been saying this for like for months now but yeah it's just uh a lot of things are happening in platinum percent. And Owl will definitely contend for the record. Is the one you get from the backup Manip the same one that you get from Extended? I was wondering. Uh, no, that. no. And that, that doesn't affect the route at all? Um, I think it plays out the same. It's just like, okay, you okay. don't use Golik for too long until Ton of Cruel. That makes sense. But for, um, I'm guessing for when the switch is made to solo Golduck, it'll be like if you don't extend the Golduck, then maybe there's going to be a backup that's like able to finish the run. Because like, I, I think you should be able to find a save and quit Golduck that's just like good enough. Right. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. Makes I think, sense. I th yeah, now now that you mention it, I I'm guessing that if you hit the Rourke battle minute, then you should be able to complete a run. As long as you like don't die. Yeah, it wouldn't be the best to rely on a save and quit, but you know, most runners are gonna go for the extended well extended anyway, but the save and quit is nice to have as a backup, as usual. Um, that's all we have for Plat 100%. Uh, but we're not done with Plat. We have a for round two run. Um, something that we very very rarely see, like ever. We haven't seen basically a new record of this in like six years now since 2018. Um, so since 2018, there's been a new Piplup seed, and now we sell in. Um, Decided to like finally 
utilize that for all the time save that you can get um along with like just like shuffling around which optional trainers you fight so that you can see all the pokes in Sinnoh. Um so yeah, he he like gets a super big lead on record like as expected because old record is ancient and uses like just a lot of unoptimized uh um trainer fights and stuff. Um yeah, most of it is most of the time saves that Usain gets on record, which is like a, it's like a five minute record or something. Or no, it's actually closer to like three, four minutes. But yeah, yeah, most of the time save that he gets on record is just like solely routing. Um, the new pip up helps a lot with um the shuffling of optional trainers and encounter minutes too. Um, he did hit an optional in the Galactic Warehouse section, so <clears throat> I'm guessing that it's not like the most polished run, but it's definitely it's definitely nice to see another E for round two run after so long without seeing any. Um, he still does the same like chain minute as um as we did in twenty eighteen, so maybe that's uh, another place of of note where like the route is still not really optimal but also um there's been more talk about like another equal round two route where um th this is uh theorized by minnow where um we can utilize a gold duck again a gold duck as the main of e4 round two <laughs> um he claims it's the fastest like it apparently it cuts out like Bidoof and uh, just like a lot of HMs or HM users that you have to catch because like Golda can learn a lot of them. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that shapes up. I know Worcester has also been talking about like E4 round two for for like years now and always always saying like yeah the the run is just like very bad. Um, talking about his uh 457 previous world record, but um. Yeah, he was he was always talk, talking about like how the route has like so much to be improved on and yeah like Usain has definitely um like dipped into the the pot of time say that's available but yeah I, I still think there's going to be a lot more that you can save on E4 round 2 probably get like a, a sub 450 if I already guess hmm. yeah that I guess I should mention that uh, this is also another, like, bounty-inspired um, goal for DSPSR. We we uh, had no activity until um, a bounty was made for you for round two. So yeah. Um, and that's it for plat, pretty much. All right. Still on DS here. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a few more here. Um, we have Worcester, uh, Purple Till Silver, glitchless record. Uh, still at three thirty, three thirty oh three. So getting super close to the three twenty nine. But um, yeah, this run is just like very solid. It's it's kind of hard for us to like showcase a run that like isn't just like solid throughout. Um, when the run is like getting this optimized, but if we're gonna be nitpicky, then the Places where he can get like larger time saves is on Jasmine and uh, on Brock because on Jasmine he didn't get like a a super good fight like he didn't get any shadow ball spit up drops or like a crit or anything he just got like a standard fight which is like ten to twenty seconds slower um, and then Brock he missed a fourteen sixteen almost star range he seems to have bad luck with that I don't know what's going on but I feel that sounds familiar maybe, <laughs> yeah maybe maybe in the Eventual two thirty nine at uh, three twenty nine, it'll have both Brock ranges hit. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it'll, it'll just do it without getting the range. But yeah, um, yeah, Worcester's just been pumping out a lot of runs. Uh, it, it does help that a uh, battle identifier Whitney is a thing because like now he doesn't lose to Whitney as much anymore, which is like one of the hard stops in early game. So yeah, he gets a lot more runs into late game. Um, I think he's since had like two runs die to red on two thirty at uh, three twenty nine pace. Um, so yeah, he's he's getting there. 
but it could be a while because this game is hard. So how many 330s does Worcester have? Uh, I feel like he's got a lot. Half you dozen know, at least. Like, in terms of like how many 330s that are PBs. Yeah. I think he has like a 33003, a 33019. I think the first one's a 31. No, so it's a 30, which was a one second PB. And um 25 in the middle of all that. So that's that's five. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, all of these are like just so close and I'm I'm sure they could have all been like uh um at three twenty nine if just a few things went better. But yeah. Um yeah, th this fight was pretty good. Um again, one of the recent improvements was um using a different Raikou and all that, and it makes the red fight a lot better. As long as you get standard luck. Um Ooh. he also gets Venusaur crit here, which yeah. is like probably the best crit in the game. Uh, barring like Jasmine Steelix. Um, yeah, so just a really good red uh red fight to end the run. Um, yeah, good stuff. It. Yeah, that's all we got for for that. Here we have a pretty incredible record in um HGSS glitchless manipulus. Uh, this is Harley who didn't have a world record before but now uh has the record for this uh he's definitely been grinding this category a lot too um in terms of world record on um, for his run he was like well behind record heading into red um but he does the the uh master setup strat the paras strat as it's called um which is basically like taking a risk and trying to hit a giga impact on pikachu uh you're pretty much normally able to hit that as long as you you know hit the 90 percent accuracy move and don't get like powerful parrot or crit by pikachu so yeah he gets oh, he, that he popped off here yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I can hear I, I can hear the audio <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and and what happens after that is like he gets um hydro cannon crit into perfect flail hp uh, flail 150 HP, and uh, pretty much once you have flail, you get the win for free. Like, you Oko, all of Red's pokes. Um, so yeah, it, what he knew at this point that he got the record. Because he got, like, the most insane red fight to to clutch the the world record. 857 red segment is, like, incredible. Um, I don't know if we're going to see a better red fight it certainly can happen because it's not flow 200. Um, but kind of nitpicking at this point. Like, this is just the most insane red that you'll see. Awesome. Very <laughs> needed for record as well. So, yeah, very nice. Um, All right. Yeah, and this is, uh, we're moving on to Gen 5 now. We have TTS. Uh, white 200% second place, uh, 30912. Um, what I've highlighted here is his signature trainer skip, which is like he does a save and quit, and um, it's pretty hard to do execution-wise, but he's pretty much got a down pat now, and um, it saves him like 20-ish seconds. Um, not no other runner is like really dared to try it though uh, but you know he's he's able to do it so utilizes it um you pretty much get to skip for two trainers using the the rippling water and the dust clouds kind of like plasma skip um but yeah the 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 start of this run was kind of crazy um if you know anything about the record in white 2 it starts off with like a 2218 Terran, which is not good but um, TTS got a twenty-two fifteen Charon, which Ooh. is like also not good. But um, it also followed a similar trajectory to record in that he eventually ends up with a one twenty-one clay, which is like 
a very good time for Clay. Um, so pretty much after getting a bad chair, uh, he gets um, like the most insane uh, drill rid of Clay like segments of of all time to still get a one twenty one. Uh, so yeah, like even though he, that the the chair and splits are bad, like he's neck and neck with Mido up until Clay. He's actually ahead, um, but he does start to lose a, a bunch of time, um, notably on Skyla. But um, yeah, it's just kind of hard to keep up with Mino. But um, he does have like trainer skip, and he was really trying hard to get like a three hundred eight here. But eventually, at the end of the game, like he didn't get enough luck to to get a a, a three hundred eight. But a three hundred nine twelve was still a very very good time. Um, BTS has like a lot of attempts in white too. He's been playing for quite a while and um, it's finally got like a satisfactory time for him. Yeah, he, he's TTS is like one of the one of the guys that's like really pushed white too. Like he's written a lot of like mid making tools and stuff. Um, yeah, that, that really helped him. And a lot, a lot of other people just like get better times than white too. So his contributions are definitely, definitely felt. So yeah, very deserved. Three hundred nine. All right, and lastly for DS runs, we have myself. Um, I got the challenge mode world record. Um. It's a three thirteen twenty one. Oh, I can hear myself through the mic. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. This this run. I, what I've highlighted here is uh, Marshall. I ended up getting triple flinch Marshall, which is like something I never really got before. Um, in my PB. Before this record, I got it for the first time like ever, and that I just like got it again. <laughs> In world record, um, I definitely needed, uh, like some form of luck, like this to clutch the record because I was actually like behind record by a good amount. Um, but yeah, like honestly, this run is nothing too great. Like the drill bird catch, I, I didn't get a first ball and then it used dig. Um, the berg was also bad. I, like, healed twice on berg because um. I was very likely dead, and it actually like paid off. But um, it's not really a a thing that top runners should be doing. Um, but I did it anyway, just for like safety. Um, but yeah, the the rest of the run is like pretty solid. Um, can't really complain. I guess on on tall, I did miss a twelve and sixteen twice on Cock Grigus. Um. Which, at that point, I thought like, "Wow, I'm I'm actually like not gonna get record even after getting uh all three flinches on Marshall." But um, on Iris, I I still had a chance on Iris, and then it, it pretty much relied on me getting a six and sixteen range on High Dragon. Um, and I and I got it. I hit like three separate other ranges on this run that are like three and sixteen, which were huge. Uh, notably, like, um, Marlin's Jail Ascent, which I would have taken, like, a death if I didn't hit that. So, yeah. Um, this run had, like, its highs and lows, uh, but mostly highs with the with the Marlin <laughs> and Marshall. So, yeah. Definitely yeah, happy to get record. Um, yeah, see a, a god Marshall every day. Like, really, really saves a lot of time. Yeah, it, it seems to... Uh, oh, it... God, God Marshall always seems to be like at the end of a really good white two run. I don't know why, but a lot of runners just like seem to tack on a good God Marshall onto like a a good run. But this run kind of needed the the God Marshall to yeah, get there. Yeah. So that makes, that makes sense. Happy that I got that. Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm not done with a challenge mode yet. I do kind of want to get like a three twelve at least. Um. Because I hardly improved on record here. I got like a nine second cut on record. Um, 
I still think I can bring it lower, but yeah, it's something still on my agenda. Yeah, that's going to be it for DS runs. Congrats again on that run. T Y. All right, so moving into 3DS runs, we have uh, Wartab's new Moon World Record of 450.17. Um, extremely good run. Uh, you'll see here he dies to Champ. Um, but what we didn't show you is that he saved before this fight, which you don't actually usually do. But because his run was so good, as you probably see from the splits, um, there's pretty much just not anything to talk about, really, up until this point happening. Like That was like significant. Which is like crazy because there's like a lot of things that can happen in Moon, um, but as you see, I mean, as you see, this is probably the best Poplio I've ever seen in a in a run. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. There's a there's a strat there's a strat in Moon um, that a couple of us refer to as high experience, um, which makes very good use of like insane special attack like this, like anything that's like twenty plus, you can save quite a bit of time. Um, by uh, one-shotting the Totem Salazzle in the Fire Trial, uh, which saves like 30-40 seconds um, in exchange for a little bit of extra experience um, earlier on. And so this is the first record that actually uses that in a run. My, my, my run, even though it existed at the time, I just opted not to go for it. Um, yeah, I mean, aside from the champ death, there's genuinely not much to talk about. This was like a very insane run. Um, it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit more work to beat it than the previous record for sure. And also he gets mirror coat after after the reset, which saves a little bit of time back. So yeah, gen genuinely like not much to talk about here. Um very solid run. Yeah, that, that looks like a manip to pre marina. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Yeah, mirror coat here me means you can just set up for free here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The Encore strats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, congrats Wartab on a great run here. I guess with that we'll move on to the Switch. This is a the first of several runs with featuring Randall Eats Cheese. Uh, this is his any percent I believe second or third is it second or third place? It is third place. Third place, okay. On Let's Go Pikachu. I don't remember too much what happened here, but um, he did get Mount Moon Chansey and uh, had a fun time with Sandshrew here. Yeah, Moon Chansey is always a, a good thing to get. Um, definitely helps with a lot of early game experience. Allows you to go a bit faster through rock tunnel as well not having to worry about your experience there so definitely pretty nice and yeah unfortunate like having a sand true like that and then having to run away from it when you still need a catch is not ideal so yeah ggs I, randall's been like you're gonna see uh in the next couple runs uh randall's been doing a lot of let's go grinding um and it's been paying off oh for sure yeah Yeah, it's uh Oh, we're back with uh we're back with we're back with Randall again with a diploma run with Amber. <laughs> yeah, new new record uh in diploma um with Randall playing on Pikachu and uh Amber playing on Eevee. Um obviously seeing here one of the the crucial parts of wow. the run getting the uh 1% pincer very fast. Um the big thing with this run, uh, there's been a lot of really small like route changes, route optimization stuff uh, regarding the trades. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, that was featured in this run is normally the first trade happens. Um, what, what happens is Pikachu will get the five Growlithe in order to trade for or to get a Persian in their game. And then when the Eevee player is in Rock Tunnel and gets Rhyhorn, they would trade the Rhyhorn to Pikachu for the Persian in Eevee. Because uh, Eevee's primary focus for Diploma Runs is to speed through the game as fast as possible. So getting a faster ride Pokemon into that game is pretty crucial. Um, 
what they opt to do here instead is actually delay that first trade until after hideout and by doing that you can use the rhyhorn in the hideout fights uh which ends up being quite a bit faster for like jesse and james um and so there's there's changes like that um as well as some other just trade balancing and things like that um it's a really cool run uh, and this beats the old record by about a minute, I think it is. So uh, not a not a huge improvement, but still in, in a run with as much RNG as this. Uh, yep. It's <laughs> really cool. It's a super fun run. All right. Next we have... Uh... Not Randall, we have Kick and Run Keith with the what was at the time the Let's Go Pikachu AOP record uh, with a 506. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this had uh, a lot of instant encounters. Um, you have instant, instant Dratini here. I'm not even going down toward Power Plant yet, uh, which is, I don't think I've ever seen one up there. Um, and then as well as an instant uh, Hitmonchan in Victory Road. So one of the big things that a lot of the uh, newer top runs of all obtainables are doing is not doing the catch chain and instead relying on a effectively 0.5% encounter rate to get one of the two Hitmonchans or Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee in Victory Road. And then you just do the dojo for the other one. Um, there are other things you can do while you're in Victory Road, so you're not just sitting there grinding for like the one encounter. Uh, but it is, you know, obviously it's a it's a bit of a commitment. But when it pays off, it can pay off pretty big because um, I think the fastest, typically your average uh, catch chain is going to be like anywhere from like six to ten minutes. So uh, if you can cut that out, it's really good. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, this run did have an early Bulbasaur, which is really nice, um, and got a Cerulean Cave Snorlax, which saves a little bit of time not having to do that fight, because uh, normally you have to catch one of the static ones. Yep. Um, however, this run did not have the best Kangaskhan spawn, which is the the first one percent spawn that you're getting in the uh, in the run. So, with a with a better Kangaskhan, this could have been. Uh, better than the Eevee record, which is a 505 right now. So, Yep. Um, and then, yeah, so this run, like we said, uh, currently second place was the world record uh, because of the next run, which is oh. Randall Eats Cheese getting the all obtainable record in 458.39. So cutting the five hour mark. Uh, for the first time for the category across both games. Um, this run had uh, really good bird catches, so getting a first ball Moltres and a second ball Articuno, uh, and Zapdos wasn't too, too far behind. Um, pretty good 1% spawns, very fast Hitmonchan and Victory Road. Uh, and what we're going to highlight here is probably like one of the only bad parts of the run. Usually with all obtainable <laughs> runs, you... Your bad parts are not the fights, uh, but here we're going to get the rare Koga Explosion turn one, uh, which <laughs> kills off the Starmie. So. Sorry, Randall. I had to show this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rare. And it's one of those things where, because of the way the AI works, getting Explosion more often turn one would actually be really good. Because um, this fight is notorious for just... Uh, it's anywhere from five turns or four turns would be absolute best down to could be like eight turns in worst case or eight or nine turns just because every Pokemon has protect every Pokemon has toxic. And so they like to, to stall you out. Um, but if you get explosion turn one and your Starmie is now at low health, pretty much everything sees a kill and goes for the kill instead of going for protects. Uh, but unfortunately, we just never get explosion turn one. Uh, apparently, unless explosion kills, and in that case, you lose even more time. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, no, this is this has been great to see. Um, a lot of people have been doing all obtainable races, so uh, I don't think we're doing a leaderboard roundup this time around. But if we were, you'd probably see quite a few all obtainable PBs. Um, and this is just really good time. 
Yeah, this 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 run was done in a, like a race with like eight people, and it was so hype because like multiple people PB'd, and then of course this this record happened. Uh, mm -hmm. and Randall took like a a long break too, so it was a little unclear <laughs> for a little bit whether he actually did get the record, but because breaks are allowed per the rule set. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty insane. All right. Um, nothing. I guess we. I think we did. Have, we might. We might have a uh, sword and shield run to talk about later. But we've highlighted um, this legends run. We don't see too many of these now. Um. Yeah. So this is. Um... Agpack, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Apologies if not. Uh, getting third place in English um, for Legends Arceus. Uh, like Iron said, Legends Arceus isn't really the most popular run, uh, but it's good to see some more runs in that 340-ish time frame. Um, you know, how can Shady have a pretty strong stranglehold on this game at the top level? Uh, but it's good to see some people... Uh, you know, making progress there. Um, I think uh, by the looks of things, um, and I guess this is a Japanese runner, um, and the, the Japanese runners, I believe, have been doing quite a few Arceus runs lately. Uh, I'm not sure of any, like, big PBs or anything, but I do know that they've been, there's been a little bit of activity there, so it's cool to see them coming over to the English side. Good stuff. Uh, so this is um, this is a run I actually like found out about last night um, when we were at, updating the uh, the list. This is a Starfall Street. The Starfall Street English record beat the previous record by three seconds. By oh, I'm gonna get the make sure this name is right. Watame, I believe. Um, this is um, at first glance, this seemed like a pretty standard run with the the duck route um as you can see he's they've got duck as their main but if you look carefully his second mon is a corvanite um, which is not was not in the original route of duck um so the route that i kind of put together and was we optimized that is with luxray um in, in addition, you also see Lechonk and not Oink alone. So pretty much what happens here is you need to pump a lot more candies into your... Uh, he actually, they actually catch a uh, Rookity and evolve it twice. You put in a lot of candies into the into the bird, and then you have nothing left over for Lechonk, unfortunately. So it's kind of not very helpful. But Corvid, Corvidite is really good against the bases. It just matches up well against the fairy in particular, which is one that's particularly bad because it's the highest level or second highest level, but it, it doesn't it's pretty got a lot of pretty tough mons to deal with. And the fighting base also, it doesn't do too bad of a job there either. Because at least it's not weak to uh, fighting, so and it's a little more bulky than, than Luxray. Uh, in addition this run also uses a level 64 um, duck instead of level 65. Um, I guess just because the experience uh, candies and the rare candies, you have to put so many more of them into into Corvus, Corviknight, which actually you need to level up to 38 because that's when it evolves instead of Luxray, which is just level 30. Um, pretty interesting. I'm not sure if this is faster, seeing we only have a three second gap between the old record and this one, but um, it's something that I'm going to look into a little bit more um, just because it's, it's really cool to try out different things and, and see how things go but um congrats on um some interesting uh creative routing here by watame so um we'll see if they try to improve this further also getting play rough turn one here on the uh on the ortega fight is huge because that zoom roll can just spam charm and you cry so <laughs> yeah really cool stuff any other comments from you guys on this one? No, I'm surprised. I'm surprised it's like such a. It's I'm surprised it's like so worth it to like build up like a second mon like that. I didn't even know like that was like a major part of the of, of your route. Yeah, because oh. the the barrages. If if you've done you've done any percent, I'm, I think head Bob and, and yeah, etiquette yeah. as well. Um, I'm not sure etiquette's probably done a little bit of starfall actually. Now I think a about it. Bit, but yeah. 
you, you really do need some levels on at least one of those secondary mons, just because the duck can't handle everything. It can, but it's slow, because you have to wait for it to finish off, finish up fighting a group. Like, if you're fighting, like, groups of three, you have to wait. If if every, if the other two mons have fainted, you have to wait forever to wait for it to, to finish, and it's just it just slows things down. So having that second mon helps. Makes sense. So... Yeah, it's really it's a really neat run. Um, the first sort of route that I worked on for this game, and it was it was a lot of fun to to play around with things. So cool to see other people kind of taking it further. Um, all right, so we have we have we have we actually have quite a few fan games in the last month or so, but we kind of only don't have time to talk about everything. Well, we might get to a few more of them later on. Um, this is. A run of um, a rum hack called Pocket Guide, and I showcased this in the PSR Marathon in 2020, I believe. Um, and this is a really bizarre run. Uh, I only discovered this like three years after I first ran the game. Is the debug menu is accessible for whatever reason? The creator just either didn't remove it on purpose or forgot to remove it. So you'll see. I think I do it here, but I'm not sure. Um, Yeah, I do. Okay. So what I end up doing is I end up entering the debug menu to give myself the choice specs. So you can actually modify your move set, um, <laughs> modify the modify your held item, and then also modify your stats. The stats are temporary though. They you have to um, if you're changing the stat itself, uh, it goes away when you level up. So you have to do it again, or you could just modify your stat stage. So a lot of the fights, I just give myself plus six special attack and plus two speed, and that's enough to kill everything. Also, I gave myself eruption, which is 150 base power <laughs> fire move. Uh, so, and also I gave myself the bu the mock bike as well. Yeah, I was gonna say, I just saw you <laughs> unequip the mock bike like three thirty seconds ago. <laughs> it's, it's such a silly run, but um, it was super fun to just play around with it and kind of try to figure out what's faster. Um, I also pick up a rare candy to sell because you don't really need rare candies when you could just give yourself godly stats. So that's just to buy repels. So that's kind of funny. Um, yeah, super, super, silly, super silly run. Also, I gave myself the choice spec, so that helps actually quite a lot. And you'll see some bad mock bike movement here. So we will, we will kind of stop showing this one. <laughs> Um, I guess what uh, we have some honorable mentions as well. Um, do we what, do we want to just go through each of these? I don't know if we have timestamps on any of these. Anyone in particular want to kind of shout out any of these that we've kind of highlighted here? Yeah, we I can... could just like rapid fire mention them. Like, I think they're all worth a mention. Do uh, you want, do you want me to pull up the what... videos on these or no? I think that may take it too long, but um, if if there's one in particular that we want to look at, then we could do that. But yeah, um, I guess I'll just start mentioning them. Uh, we have revolver. We've got a red glitches run. Uh, one forty-seven fifty-nine. Um, and then there's a few yellow runners. Uh, Yuji To, yellow glitchless in one fifty-five fourteen. Um, yeah, th these honorable mention runs are like all, like, they're good times for sure, but um, doesn't uh quite fit the bill. Uh, it is just like a new segment that we're trying to you know highlight some, some up and coming runners or like decent times that otherwise wouldn't be showcased. Just like very quickly, yeah. Uh, Parma Pizza got a yellow glitches time of one fifty five thirty nine. Uh, and then truly the sapphire glitches run in one fifty seven thirty eight. Um, truly has kind of been uh, grinding sapphire lately. Um, it's definitely good to see him get a one fifty seven pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yaxo has a DP any percent PB of fifty seven twenty seven. That's a good time as well. Um, I do want to open up this run. Uh, yeah, I got that. I got I got that one there. Yeah. Uh, this Starly run is like very good. Um, so good to the 
point where it's only 17 seconds slower than the current DP JPN glitchless record with Jimchar. So just just like putting that uh into mind. Um this run lost like 40 seconds on the candy split or something. Like around 40 seconds. Um it gets like paralyzed here by by Raichu static and it also gets like fake out. Um yeah, so it's kind of yeah. crazy to imagine that in DP, like, Starly could be, like, world record capable. It certainly is, but um, this is one of the, uh, it, it's like a very good run for Starly, whereas uh, Chimchar can definitely still get, like, a, the same time, but, like, a lot easier, I think. But, honestly, it's still kind of unexplored, so we don't really know for sure yet. Um. Yeah, the, the Starly run is kind of like a surprise candidate for for record. Even like Dexy doesn't really know himself mm. like whether he should be like trying to improve Starly, like maybe like a route change will actually put it over the edge or like something like that. Yeah, generally Starly is just like more consistent. Like you don't have to hit any fire blasts, but there are like like gonna be ranges with um close combat on like steel types and stuff. Um, I think the E four can be a little bit troubling, like Flint and um Bertha, those two in particular. Uh, you don't have great matchups for those. Um, Starly, like at, you you without like intimidate. And like close combat, like fax boxes, like Starly would be the best, but um, yeah, you just, you just like close combat all too much. Like it's it's like one of your only coverage moves are like steals and rocks. Yeah, so yeah. it's pretty tough to to stomach that time loss every time. Um, you know, Inferno does use CC, but it also like keeps grass not for a while, so. It's not like he has to deal with that time loss every time he goes up against the rock type. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, very cool run to see. Um, maybe a Starly record on the on the horizon, but don't think we can count on that. But we will see. A um, few more honorable mentions. We have Cram. Um, Got a PB in black and white one, uh, 311.47. It is third place, but we decide to not highlight it because it's like a three second PB and it didn't move him up on the leaderboard. Um, we also have Ed Bob. Uh, he did a run of XY in Japanese and got second place at 356.53. Yeah, um, I mean. Not not a very good run, but I just wanted to try it out, and I'll probably be back for more. But it's it's, it's very interesting to play the game in a different language. I will say, first time I've ever done it before. Just like relying on like menuing cues and stuff. Um, not really anything special about the run itself. But yeah, okay. would recommend and... if you get the chance. Yeah, I think that um, I mean. The XY GPN record, is it like really good where it stands right now or Well it's hard to say because the record that's on the boards is not Ringo's record, which I think is like Ringo is a significantly better time than when Axis that's um, on the boards. Okay. Um do, do you know what time it is? I, I I remember timing it to be like a three forty in like English timing, Ringo's Ringo's room. Oh, okay. Yeah, um when Axis is closer to like three forty five, I think. I had to guess. Um, yeah, Ring Ring goes runs really good. I, I probably don't have any intentions of trying to beat him at any point, but I probably will try to get a better run at some point. Yeah, that makes sense. Just another way to play X Y for you, and yeah, you love to play X Y. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a few switch runs. To mention, uh, 
Hagera Rune, I think that's how you say it. Uh, got a Path of Legends um, Japanese world record. Um, 141.55 does seem like a good time. Um, compared to English, I yeah. think it's also 141. So, yeah. Uh, no, Path of Legends timing in Japanese includes the, the start timing. So it's like 40 minutes longer. Um, Even so 50, like, maybe. Um, yeah. Or 50. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I, I, yeah. I, I thought yeah. it was something else. Yeah. Um, I... It does look like a competitive board, though. And that, that's what makes it, makes me think that it's actually like a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm sure. Yeah. Like a good run. Yeah. I think. Wow, there are a lot of runs on this board. Bigger. I got nine. Sometimes they um, have in their splits, like when the English timing starts, but it's it doesn't look like it's very clear here. Mm. It might be the the fifty. 50 the fifty, 50 yeah, that's what I'm yeah. thinking too. Yeah, it would be right around here. Yeah, be just after this. Yep. That's pretty much right, yeah. Yeah, so 50... It would be like... What is that? 51... 33? 33, yeah. 33. Which, if you compare that to... English is think... pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Right there, yeah. Definitely. Um... And then also on Scarlet Violet, uh, you can see two new categories, Indigo Disc and Mochi Mayhem. Uh, Crisis Aurus has done a couple of runs, uh, but apparently hasn't submitted for Indigo Disc. Uh, but you can actually see the Japanese runners um, have really taken to both Indigo Disc and Mochi Mayhem. Uh, Indigo Disc being the second DLC and Mochi Mayhem being the epilogue, uh, which is why these times are incredibly long. Uh, so. Yeah, the uh, unfortunately DLC two doesn't really have a like teal mask style run where you can just do it from uh, the school. You kind of have to play the whole game uh, because it's more of a post game focused DLC. Yeah, I also want to highlight one more thing that I just noticed being on this leaderboard is the diploma run. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there is a diploma run on Japanese. Uh, yeah. There oh is. my gosh! It's it's, it's, it's English three player, um, two, a two oh, day no. run, <laughs> um, where they I think what they did is one player fil finished their diploma and the other two were kind of helping, but um, mm -hmm. oh, okay. If it'll allow me to play here, yeah, it does. We'll just kind of. Oh yeah, god, I, 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 too, it's going to be so much worse because of all the stupid BBQs <laughs> you have to do. <laughs> I haven't played any of that, so I don't know what you're talking uh, yeah, about. All the legendaries. <laughs> uh... Uh, all the legendaries, all of the... Uh... Yeah, so the basically all of the starters are available in the second DLC area, but you have to unlock them by doing, like... Essentially, there are a bunch of these rolling tasks you get where it's like, defeat... 10 Pokemon using the Let's Go feature or uh, take a picture of a Pokemon in the canyon biome. Um, I think I think Malamar's got a really weird evolution. Is it Malamar? Yeah, Malamar's evolution is a weird one, but it the the starters are lo like those tasks you do give you like a hundred points and each starter uh, well in order to unlock a region worth of starters, which there are four regions, you need 3,000 points. So it's like, it's a super long grind you have to do if you're doing it by yourself. Uh, it gets sped up if you're doing it with people, which is probably uh, what they ended up doing a lot of. So. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, quite the undertaking, so. Shout out to this group of people. <laughs> yeah. For doing this. 
That's wild. It's very impressive. Um, and then, yeah, it didn't end up in our list. Uh, I think it just got missed. The There also was a new record in uh, Pokemon Shield, any percent with DLC. Yeah, I can um, go find that one. Uh, Pierjo right yeah. got a 40105. Uh, and this one is kind of notable, um, in my opinion, because of the Pokemon used. Uh, it's under English Turbo. Oh, that would be... That's English No Turbo. Yeah. Um, this one's kind of notable because it uses an Alchemy, uh, which is not historically thought of as being a very good uh, Pokemon for this category. Um, obviously, the tier list that was made back when the category was first being formed isn't really, like, you know, the true word, but it was it was kind of given, like, a B tier. Um before but it was able to put up a, a really solid time 401 is definitely not too bad um the mirror match of alchemies i know yeah i just i just randomly way. picked that so <laughs> <laughs> yeah the question is does do they dynamax too doubtful because you're really high level but yeah probably not no <laughs> oh, they do they do default the gmax forms do they in Dynamax Adventures? Yes. Or no? That's pretty I, cool. I, yeah, I think they do have the G-Max forms. Um, yeah, but it's probably on a high enough level that it typically doesn't matter. So. Yeah. Right. Alchemy is an interesting one because if, if the game were doubles, it would be one of the best like second mons you could have just because of the... Uh, its signature move is a move called Decorate, which is essentially a plus two, plus two to special attack and attack for your partner. Um, oh. Yeah. And it, and it starts with it in the Dynamax Adventures. Uh, but obviously that doesn't help you at all in a single player speedrun. So. <laughs> That's wild. Any other notables we want to talk about? I think that's most of it. There's quite a few. There's a lot of stuff we missed. We're kind of ca we're kind of catching up here. We didn't do a a December podcast, I believe, and then we didn't do one in January. So catching up. Um, yeah, I think the I I looked like so many times because like there are a lot of times where like. I thought we were gonna do a podcast yeah. soon, so like I just like looked through the the uh, recent runs on SRC. So I think this is pretty thorough for what we missed. Um, yeah. Uh, going forward, I think um, podcasts will look somewhat similar to this, but some sections of the podcast we didn't have ready for today that might come back later, like highlighting marathon runs or like you know we're we're definitely gonna bring guests on in the future like that's not gonna that's not gonna change um we might have like highlight videos to show there's a lot of stuff that we haven't um fully fleshed out yet but um yeah we're, we're we're gonna get there stay tuned yeah so as we um, kind of mentioned at the start of the podcast um Jordan97, um, our tech person for the last couple seasons, um, has stepped down. Uh, he's put in so much work for PSR TV, and we're really, really grateful for all everything he's done. Um, but he's he's going to kind of uh, do a bit less, um, and uh, he deservedly so. He's, he's definitely put in a lot of time. Um, so I will be taking over uh, tech, and I think it went pretty well today. So shout outs to... Hey, Shout outs to Jordan for um, walking me through everything. That was super, super straightforward. So, uh, and I guess Head Bob's joining us as well. And I think Etiquette, you're going to be kind of either doing part time or you're stepping down completely. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, I was going to say this is probably uh, the last of my regular appearances. Um, I'm still obviously happy to come on whenever, uh, either as a guest or temp host or anything like that. Um, but I think with the addition of Head Bob uh, and a lot of you know crossover between the games that we know, um, I figure it's a good time for me to to step down as well, and just uh, yeah, just 
a lot of other things to focus on. So not just don't quite have as much time as I used to. Um, but the uh, podcast has been an absolute blast. Um, very thankful to have been on for the last two years, three years. Honestly, I forget. Um, but it's it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun, honestly, learning about like all the games that I, I don't necessarily have the same you know, level of experience with. Uh, I think one of the things I, I always really liked was, you know, the, the focus topics that we started last year were really good, just sort of diving into those games. Um, and it, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I didn't really come with anything prepared to say, but I just uh, want to say thanks for having me. And um, I will s still be around, but just not on the podcast regularly. Thanks for thanks for uh, co-hosting with us. It was a blast, Etiquette. I very much appreciate all the podcasts that you've done with us. Yeah, I, I got big shoes to fill, but hopefully, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I really I think you had like a pretty big impact on the on the podcast. So thank you for your all your hard work the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, the next podcast should be on the 2nd of March, so that will be um, three weeks minus one day from now, uh, if everything goes well, so stay tuned for that. As you have also noticed, we have we started our podcast a little bit earlier, I think we're three hours earlier than we've typically done, um, so we're going to probably be, and I'm not sure if we're going to be on Sunday, uh, I think the 2nd is a Saturday anyway, but we're aiming for Saturday at noon for the podcast moving forward unless hosts are away etc so that's kind of what we're going to aim for um so mark that on your calendars if you still use them <laughs> um and uh follow the channel so that way you know what we, when we go live and uh yeah anything else uh you guys want to add um I think that's mostly it. Um, the podcast, one, one of the goals that um, we had for like the newer season is to like kind of reduce uh, the length. Um, I guess if people want to like pitch in on like any changes that we made, like you know the marathons, like or um, the leaderboard roundup, I know is one that like people might want to still see, but um, I think with the addition of honorable mentions like that's kind of like it's kind of like filling in while being much more uh time efficient so i don't know if, if there's anything that people want to see yeah then feel free to let us know don't hesitate for sure we're definitely looking for ideas yeah a lot of changes so we're definitely open to any feedback and uh, I think I'm just going to plug the hosts here. I'm not sure if, yeah, this needs to be updated, but um, I'm sure a lot of you already follow Head Bob. So, <laughs> but if you if you don't, we'll we'll get that we'll get that updated next time. And um, but three of the four people on this list are here. So follow Jordan, anyways. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, without further ado, that, that'll be it for today's show. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next month. Take care. Have a good one. See you.